Good morning. I often talk a lot about vegetables because I, I grow a fair bit. If you had a comment on, uh, on, on YouTube about do I eat it all, the answer is no. Quite often I trade for some of my building materials, very useful. Um, speaking to a, a very experienced uh, friend and allotment neighbour the other day, he pointed out something on, on my uh, one of my fruit trees, which I'm going to show you shortly. I don't often speak about fruit. My plan had been some 10 years ago that I would expect to be bored rigid with vegetables. So I put a load of fruit in and the fruit is pretty much every bush and plant you can see. On earlier, very early videos I'll explain about the nature of that hedge which has wild plum uh, and elderberry, hazel at the front. The more formal top fruit, cherry, apple, <laughs> largely with um, a bit of pruning during the summer, which I haven't done yet, and major pruning in the winter, I leave alone. These things like cherry and uh, plums, which are behind me, tend to, uh, will do in the summer for fungal diseases. Now, I was looking down here, because that's a stump of an old tree, and it happened to be in the way, it's in the middle of this bed and this bed prior to those existence, their existence, but it developed canker, fungal infection. The cherry over here, purchased when they were quite difficult to get routinely in shops, and I had to order mail order from Kent in the south of England. And after a year or two, I noticed the leaves were curling every time it uh, spring arrived and it had what's called cherry blackfly. I didn't know that, I had to look it up, which I'll show you where I found out. Anyway, try as I may with spraying with various things, in the end I felt the only way to do this, get rid of it, was to cut it back. So I actually cut this tree back. I actually cut it down to there. And the great thing was, was I could retrain it. So actually I've retrained it like this by pulling down the branches and then I'm hoping it starts to look a bit like a, a Japanese cherry, with, which is very flat. <laughs> That's an aside. The reason I came down this morning is because a said friend noticed something on my one of my apple trees. And it's an early apple tree. It's the earliest I've got. And I can't remember the blooming name of it. It's something like mid-August. Now, the early apples don't keep as long, apparently. Um, but I, f unfortunately, find them better in taste. I say unfortunately because I went and planted a lot of longer lasting later season ones like James Grieve. However, he noticed this. Now, I'm going to try and zoom in. I hope I don't stop the video, which I tend to do. Now, I'd assumed this was a fungal infection. During one of my brighter periods, I was being creative and I thought I'd train this branch from this early apple tree along the back of the greenhouse. So this is north facing. And I just thought it'd look quite nice, espalier type, etc. and so on. Anyway, it didn't really do much. And I noticed last year that this, I assumed it was a fungal infection. I assumed because it's dark, damp and north facing. And it looked fungal. Anyway, he said, you got woolly aphid. Woolly aphid. Explained, very difficult to treat aphid. Taps into the main uh, new shoots and causes a site for other diseases. In this case, canker. Now, given that I live in the rainy northwest of England, I have already suffered from canker. And I might add two of the apple trees on the boundary, which, which I didn't show you. One of them, well established, has canker. It's very common up here. I don't expect the lifespan of an apple tree to be potentially as long as expected. So I went away and looked up Willy Aphid. He said, get rid of it. I looked up and that white coat gives it some very protective uh, factors. So you, uh, I read about various uh, systemic killers, topical killers, so topical killers, uh, will work directly on it, but it's very difficult because of that waxy white coat for it to penetrate. Systemic, 
wouldn't really be decent for a tree that you're going to be eating on because it goes through the tree. I don't fancy eating that. So it, it left me with the original advice, which was to cut and get rid of, and that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove all that side branch. Any clever thinking of me is going to be the end of it, and we'll, I'll just clean the wound with an oil-based thing, whatever I've got in the shed, basically. And that's woolly aphid, so it's just to keep an eye on it. I might add that a huge amount of wealth comes from the Hessian books. There is, There are loads of books, but I just find these great. There's the vegetable expert, there's the garden DIY expert. For those of you who, like me, who was, had never picked up anything since the teenage years or before from school, and I find that really useful, and they're very cheap, and it's very concise. You'll read it time and time again and always find something new. The varieties I might add, you might not recall on the veg, but they're often the parents of many of the veg you've got. So, woolly aphid, I'm hoping, is going to be removed today. You can see it spread all along there, and I'm hoping it doesn't feed back. And I had read, it goes onto the rootstock, and I think there's a teeny weeny bit there. I don't know how long this tree's got left. I'm not very good on my fruit trees. They're slowly dying back. All for now. Goodbye.